Hey everyone, so in this video I'm going to be showing you how to create cool looking charts like this in Notion. So Notion currently still doesn't have a charts feature, but we can create charts using various third party tools. Now I'm actually going to be showing you two different methods here. So the first one is by embedding charts into Notion from Google Sheets. So I know what you're thinking and no, you won't have to physically input the data into both Notion and Google Sheets. I'm actually going to be showing you how you can connect your Notion account with Google Sheets so that the chart will automatically update when you make a change in Notion. This means that you won't have to input your data into both Notion and Google Sheets. You'll just update the data in Notion and your chart will also update. Now the pros of this option are that it's easy to implement and completely free, but the cons are that it does take a little bit of time to set up. But once the initial setup is complete, your chart will automatically update and you'll no longer have to edit the Google Sheet at all. The second option is by using a tool like Notion to Charts, which does the exact same thing, but it just simplifies the setup process for you. The pros of this method is that it's pretty easy to use and it can connects up to your Notion account. The main con is that you do need to pay for unlimited charts. Now I've spent a ton of time researching and trying out different tools and Notion to Charts is by far the best one. So they do have a free plan where you can create one chart for free, but to create unlimited charts, you will need to sign up to their premium plan, which at the time of filming costs $3 per month. Now I'm not affiliated with this company in any way. I just think that this tool is the easiest way to create charts in Notion. Okay, so now to the tutorial, I'll start by showing you how to embed charts into Notion with Google Sheets. Then I'll show you how to use Notion to Charts, also known as Chartbase. You can use the timestamps below to skip to the appropriate section. So here's the database that we're gonna be using in this example. So as you can see, it's just a simple steps database. So I have the date here, and in this column, we just have the number of steps that I completed on that day. And I just want to create a bar chart that just shows over time how my steps have increased and decreased. So this is quite a simple example, but you can create something a little bit more complex if you wanted to add more data, but this is what I'm gonna stick with for this example. So once you have your database all set up in Notion, we're gonna go over to Google Sheets and create a brand new Google Sheet. Okay, so I've just created this brand new Google Sheet. As you can see, it's completely empty. I'm just gonna change the name and I'm just gonna call it Steps Chart. So the only thing we need to do here is add in some header columns. So you do need to add a header into the top box for any of the data that you want to pull through into your Google Sheet. So in my case, we have our Steps database. So it had, if you remember, the date in one column and the number of steps in the other. So that's the data that I want to pull through into Google Sheets to create my chart. So I'm simply gonna name the first column the date and the second column here, I'm gonna label steps. So essentially all that's gonna happen is when I've set up the connection between Notion and Google Sheets, the date is gonna appear in this column and the number of steps are gonna appear in this column. And that's when I can then use that data to create a chart that I will then embed into Notion. So that's all you need to do for now. So the next thing we need to do is connect together our Notion database with this Google Sheet. So essentially what I want to happen is every time I add something new to my Notion database, I want it to be pulled through into to this Google Sheet. So the way that we can do that is using a third party that's gonna connect them together. And the one I'm gonna show you today is Zapier. There are definitely a few other companies or a few other apps that will do the same thing, but I've personally found that Zapier is the easiest to use. So that's the one I'm gonna show you today. So here we are over on Zapier. So I will leave a link to this website in the description box. You can do this for free. They do have a premium version, but for this tutorial, you will only need to use their free version, which is what I'm using. So you will just need to make an account. It's pretty quick and easy. You can connect it up with your Google account so it only takes a minute or two to create. So once you are logged in you want to click this button create zap. Now what a zap is it's essentially just connecting one app with another so that's the actual connection that we're going to have between Notion and Google Sheets. So I'm going to click on this create zap button and that's then going to bring up this page. So what we want to look at here is this trigger and action. So we want to set a trigger which in this case is going to be when something is added to our Notion database and we want to set our action so what do we want to happen when this trigger occurs? So when something is added to our Notion database, we want the action to be that it is added into our Google Sheet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on trigger firstly, and it's gonna start by asking me which app I want to use for our trigger. So in this case, it's Notion, so I'm gonna select Notion. If it doesn't appear here, you can just type Notion into the search bar and then just click on Notion. So next it's gonna ask us to select an event. So if you click on this box, it will give you two different options, either a new database item or an updated database item. So for me, I'm gonna select new database item as I want this to be triggered when something new is added to the database, but you may want to select this updated database item if you're going to be updating cells within your Notion rather than creating new items. So I'm going to go with new database item. So this is 
is going to be the trigger. So when something new is added to our database, it's going to start this zap, which essentially is just going to send that information over to our Google Sheet. So I'm going to click continue. So next it's going to ask you to select your Notion account. So I've already got this set up because I have used this previously, but it will just ask you simply just to connect your Notion account. It's pretty simple and easy to follow the instructions. So once you've connected your Notion account, you can then click continue. So next it's going to ask you which database you want to use. So we obviously need to connect it to the exact database within Notion. So you can simply just click on here and you can search your databases by name. I have found that this doesn't always bring up everything. So if you're struggling, you can put in the actual ID of the database, which I'm going to show you how to find in a moment. So for me, this one has appeared. So here's our steps chart. So I'm going to select that one. But as I said, if it doesn't come up as an option, if you see this number here, this is actually the ID of the database. So you can and simply just put the ID in here. So let's just go back over to Notion and I'll show you how you can grab that ID. So here again is our database in Notion. So what I'm going to do is click on the six little dots next to here and I'm just going to select open as page. So all that does is it's just going to open up that database in a full page view. And to find the ID, all you need to do is just go up to the URL here. And this little portion of the URL is actually the ID. So it's the numbers and letters in between this forward slash after at your name and just before the question mark here. So if you just copy that ID and if I just go back now over to Zapier, if you can see this code here is the exact same code. So if I just paste that in here, as you can see, this is the ID and that matches the ID here. So if you can't find your database in the list, then just paste this code in and it will be able to find it for you. But in this case, it was bringing up the steps chart for me anyway. So I'm just going to select that one. And once you've selected it, you can then click continue. So next, it's going to run a test. So this is simply just a test to check that your trigger works. It needs to test that you've actually successfully managed to connect up your Notion account. So all you want to do here is just click this test trigger option and just give it a second. And it will usually come up with something like this. So it's saying that it's found some records in my Notion account, which is great. So you just want to select any of these options. It doesn't really matter which one you choose. So I'm just gonna stick with this one and I'm gonna click continue with selected record. And that is the test complete. Next, it's now asking me about the action. So this is what I want to happen once that trigger has been activated. So in this case, we want to add the database item to our Google Sheets. So I'm gonna select Google Sheets here as the option. So next it's gonna ask us to select the event. So if I just click on here, it's going to have a ton of different options. So what I wanted to do is create a spreadsheet row. So this is going to create a new row in our spreadsheet. So there are a ton of different options, but this is the one that you'll want to go with to create a chart. So I'm going to select that one and click continue. So next it's going to ask to connect up with your Google Sheets account. So just make sure you know which email address you use for your Google Sheets and just connect it up here. I've already done this previously, so it's already connected up for me, but it will just take a couple of moments just to connect up your Google account. And once that's connected, you can click continue. And this is going to ask you exactly which drive and which spreadsheet that you want to add the information to. So we'll start with drive. So it usually would just bring up one option here, my Google Drive. So I'm going to select that one. And then it's going to ask me which spreadsheet I want to add this to. So if you remember, our spreadsheet was named steps chart. So that's the one I'm going to search for. I'm just going to type that into the search bar here and select this one. So that's the exact spreadsheet that I created. And then it will ask you which worksheet you want to add the data to. So in this case, I only have a one worksheet it's just sheet one. But if you have multiple sheets within your Google Sheet, then you'll want to select the appropriate one. So I'm just going to select this one as that's the only worksheet that I've created. And next what it's going to do is bring up the headers. So if you remember earlier, I showed you that we needed to add in the headers onto the Google Sheet. Now this is the reason why, because it's going to ask us what information we want to put in each column. So if you remember, I just added a date header and a steps header. So if we just click on the date one first. So this is going to bring up all of the information that we have in our Notion data database. So it has a lot of information on here, but the one that we want to include here is the name. So I actually put the date in the first column, which was the name column. Let me just go back and show you. So here is our database. So in the first column, which is name, I have the date here. And the second column is called number of steps. And I actually have the steps in there. So let's go back over to Zapier. So as I said, the date is in the name column, and it does just give you an example of a record that is in one of the columns. So I'm going to select this. So essentially what I've done there is I'm saying whenever something new is added, 
added into my Notion database. I want you to add whatever is in the name column into the date column within my Google Sheet. Now for steps, I'm just gonna click on here. So this is essentially asking me, what do I want to input into the steps column within my Google Sheet? So in this case, I just want to add in the exact number of steps that is in my Notion database. So that's this one here. So it's number of steps. And here, as you can see, it's giving an example of what is in the column. So that's the one I'm gonna select. So all these details are essentially just telling it exactly what we want it to input into our Google Sheet when we add something new to the Notion database, okay? So I'm then gonna click continue. And then it's gonna ask us to do a test step. So it's up to you, you can skip the test. I'm just gonna go ahead and do it just to make sure it's all working appropriately. And as you can see here, it says that a spreadsheet role was sent to Google Sheets about a second ago. So let's go over to our Google Sheet to see if it's there. So here we are in our Google Sheet. And as you can see, it has just added that test row into our Google Sheet. So as you can see, that's showing that the Zap has been set up correctly. So now whenever I add something to my Notion database, it will show up here in our Google Sheet, which is great. So as I've tested it and it did work, I'm gonna hit publish. So if you just give it a second, it will then be published. And as you can see, it will now ask you if you want to transfer the existing data. So if you already have a lot of data within the Notion database, you may want to transfer this over right at the start. So I am just gonna select this transfer existing data option. So as you can see, it's now pulling through all of the records. So I did only have five records in that Notion database. So it's pulling through them all. So I'm just gonna select all of them like this and click next. And it's just telling me that I'm gonna be sending those records from Notion to Google Sheets. So I'm gonna click send data. And that's now complete. So I'm just gonna exit the transfer and head back over to the Google Sheet. So as you can see, all of those records have now been transferred. We do still have this example one here. So I'm just gonna click on this one and delete it as this was just the test row that we inputted. Now I have found that sometimes it does mix the records up. So as you can see, there's no longer in the correct order, which is a little bit annoying, but you can just rearrange them to make sure they're in the right order. So I'm just gonna drag and drop the rows to put them in the right order again. So now that we have the integration set up, I'm just gonna show you how the Zap works. So if we just go back over to Notion quickly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add another record just to show you how it will appear in the Google Sheet. So I'm just gonna add another one. Let's do October 6th and just put in some data. So I've just added a new row to this database. So if you remember, that was the trigger for the Zap that we just set up. So this data should be sent over to our Google Sheet. So let's head back over there and see if it's appeared. So as you can see, here is the record that we've just added and it has pulled through into our Google Sheet. I have noticed that it can sometimes take up to a minute or two for the data to come through. So if it doesn't come through straight away, just give it a couple of minutes and it will come through eventually. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is use this data to create a chart and we're then gonna embed that chart into Notion so that it updates automatically when we add data into Notion. So let's start by creating the chart in Google Sheets. So what you want to do is click on insert and select this chart option. And that will then insert a chart like this. You can customize this quite a lot within the settings here. So I'm just gonna play around with it to create something that I like the look of. So it has come up as a line chart. You can also select a bar chart if you'd prefer, but I think I'm gonna keep it as a line chart in this case. One thing you do need to update is the data range here. So as you can see, it's currently bringing up A1 to B7. So if we look B7, that is just including all of the rows in our current database. But if we were to add another row, it's then not going to include it because that would be on the B8 row. And obviously, as you can tell, B8 is not included in this data range for the chart. So I'm actually just going to change it to B999. So that's just going to ensure that any record that gets added here will be included in the chart. And then I'm just going to select the customize option to play around with the colors and the fonts and things like that. So let's start with the chart style. So in here you can play around with the font. So let's go with a wide font like this one. So as you can see, that's just updated the fonts here. There are a lot of different fonts here to choose from. So you can really play around with it to pick something that you like. I think I'm just going to go with the wide option. You can add a background color here if you want a background color. I think I might just stick with the white option. And I might also select the smooth option, which is gonna make the line just look a little bit smoother. But it's really up to you depending on exactly the sort of look that you're going for. I'm also just gonna place the chart title in the center like this rather than to the left. And I'm gonna make the title black as well rather than gray. And there are a ton of other options here that you can play around with. And I'm also just gonna change the actual line on the graph here. So you can change the color. So maybe let's make it orange, for example. And you can also change if you want a dash line like this. I think I'll just keep it solid. And I have just changed the thickness here to make it a little bit thicker. So you can just play around with the look and the style of the chart for as long as you like. I think I'm kind of happy with this one. So this is the one I'm gonna go with for now. So the next thing we need to do is publish this chart. So once you're happy with the chart, you wanna click on these three little dots here and select publish chart. And you want to make 
sure you run this link option here and just select publish and I'm going to select OK. So now that the chart is published, I can now embed it into Notion. So I'm actually just going to copy the link here. So I'm just going to hold down Command C and copy the link. And now we're going to head back over to Notion. So here we are back in Notion. So here is the database from earlier. I'm just going to scroll down and add in the chart just below. So what I'm going to do is type in forward slash embed and select this embed block here. And under embed link, I'm just going to paste in that link that we just copied in here and select embed link. And if you just give it a second, it will then load up our chart. So here it is. I'm just going to play around with the bars here just to pull it into the center. You can play around with the sizing of the chart a little bit here. And there we have our chart. So essentially that's all you need to do. So now every time that I add something new to the table, it will send it over to our Google sheet. It will update the chart and then the chart will update in Notion. One thing I will say is that I have noticed it is a little bit slow with updating. It does update the chart, but it can take a little bit of time for all these steps to occur. So I am just going to add something in here and I'll time how long it takes for it to actually show up on our chart and let you know. So let's add just one more record. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of time and see how long it takes for this to update on our chart. So it's only been around 30 seconds and it has already updated on the chart on the Google sheet. So now we just need to wait for this to update again back on our Notion page. So let's head back over to Notion to see if it's updated. So currently it's not updated. So let me just refresh the page and see if it comes up. Okay, so I've just refreshed it again and it has now updated on the chart. So from the time that I inputted the new data in here, it took around two minutes for it to update on the chart, which I don't think is too bad for a completely free option and now that we've set everything up all you need to do is just add data to this database and it will update on the chart so you don't actually need to go back to that google sheet anymore you just need to make sure it's still there to collect the data but you don't need to actually update any data within the google sheet all you need to do is just add data to your notion database and this chart will update essentially which is pretty cool so just before we jump back into this tutorial i just want to mention that i do have a ton of pre-made notion templates over on my store you can check these out i will just leave a link in the description description box below. So that's all back to the tutorial. So the second method that I'm going to show you today is how to use Notion to Charts, also known as Chartbase. So the website here is notion to charts.com. So I'll put the link in the description box below. Um, so as I said, you can create one chart for free, which is what I'm going to show you how to do today. But they do also have a premium version if you need unlimited charts. It only costs $3 a month, which I think is a pretty good deal if you need a lot of charts within Notion. So today I'm going to show you how to use their free plan where you can create one chart for free. So let's have a look how we can do that. So I'm going to start by clicking on this get started free button up here. So first it's going to ask you to create an account. So I'm going to just use my Google account for this. And here we are now in the chart base editor. So first thing it's going to ask me to do is connect to my Notion workspace. So I'm simply just going to click on this connect to Notion button. So now it's going to request access to our Notion account. So I'm just going to select the pages that I want to share with this website. So it will bring up all of the pages within your Notion, but you actually just want to give it access to the specific database that you want to create a chart from. So in this case, it was my step database. So I named the database steps chart. So I'm just going to search for it here. And here is the database. So that's the one I'm going to select. So as you can see, that database has now been selected. So that's all I'm going to give this website access to. And I'm just going to select allow access. So that will then bring you to this page. So then we're going to click this create chart button to create our first chart. So first, it's going to ask you to select what type of chart you want to create. So there are quite a few different options here. I think I'm just going to stick with this bar chart option for this one, but you can select any that you like. And I'm going to click next. So now it's going to ask you to select the database. So I did actually only give it access to one database, which was our steps database. So obviously that's the one I'm going to select and I'm going to click next. So you can input the title or label for your chart here. So it just comes up with a database title. I actually just want to call it steps rather than steps chart. And it'll then ask you what you want to put on the X and Y axis. So you can select the appropriate column. So for our X axis, I think we're going to have the name column. So that was where I've put the date. And for the Y axis, I'm going to put the number of steps steps. And that is all the settings complete. So this is a lot quicker and more simple compared to the Google Sheets version. But obviously, as I said, you can only create one chart with this option before you have to pay. Whereas the Google Sheets option that I showed you earlier is completely free and you can create as many charts as you like. But once I fill this in, I'm just going to click create chart. And as you can see, the chart has now been created. So this is the chart that is come up with to start. So one thing that I have noticed is that the data here is not 
in the correct order. So if I look right at the bottom, the dates are not in the right order. So it has mixed up the data similar to what the Google Sheets did. So I'm just gonna change that. So if you just look at the settings in the side and scroll down where it says sort by, it's currently set to none. So I'm actually gonna change it to sort by the name. And as you can see, that's now put them back in the correct order. There are a ton of different options here that you can play around with. I think for me, the main one I want to change is the colors. I kind of want all the bars to be the same color rather than different colors. So I'm gonna change from multiple colors to single color. And you can then select here which color you'd like to use. So I think I might just go with a blue color like this. I do love that it's really easy to change around the style of the chart. So if I change my mind, I can easily switch it to a bar chart like this or a pie chart or a horizontal bar chart or any of the other options. But I think for this example, I'm gonna stick with the bar chart. So once you're happy with all of the settings and the colors of your chart, you can click on this get embed link option. And all you need to do is just click this copy button and copy this link to your clipboard. And we're gonna head back over to Notion. Okay, so back over in Notion. So here is the chart we created earlier using Google Sheets. So just below, I'm gonna input our new chart using the Notion to charts feature. So again, I'm gonna type in forward slash embed and grab that embed block and just paste in the link and click embed link. So here is our chart. So you can play around with the sizing using these bars on the sides. I think I'll just make it a little bit thinner. So similar to the other graph up here using Google Sheets, this bar chart will update as you add more data into Notion. So let's just add another record to see how fast this one updates. So let's just add another record for October 8th. Okay, so I've just added the record here. So let's watch and see how long it takes for this bar chart to update. So I've just refreshed the page and as you can see, it has updated on this chart. So this chart definitely does update a little bit quicker than the Google Sheets chart. So as you can see, the Google Sheets one hasn't yet updated. So earlier it took about two minutes for the Google Sheets version to update, but the chart base or Notion to charts version does update pretty much instantly, but you do still have to refresh the page. So I said, it's up to you. So the two different options are the Google Sheets option, which takes around two minutes to update and is completely free and you can create unlimited charts. The chart base or Notion to charts version is faster updating. It did update pretty much instantly, but I did still have to refresh the page. However, you do have to pay for unlimited charts. So you can only create one chart for free and then you would have to pay $3 a month in order to get access to their unlimited charts feature. So it's really up to you depending on your budget and the time that you have to set this up because the Google Sheets one does take a little bit of time to set up. And that's it. If you did find this video useful, then I'd really appreciate if you could give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel as I upload new Notion tutorials twice a week. You can also check out my pre-made Notion templates like this awesome finance tracker on my store. The link will be in the description box below.